men would bless the Lord, would praise the Lord for His goodness, for His wonderful works among the children of men. There's some folks here this morning, some of us here today, that's been through some storms. We face the onslaught of the enemy in our lives, and we've, we've survived it, and we're here to tell about it. All oh, that men would praise Him for all His wonderful works toward the children of men. We've got something to praise Him for, and we need to hear it. Those who may have not have experienced the storm as you have need to hear the praises of God from your mouth. Well, I want to talk to you this morning for a little while on how to navigate the storms of life. There's actually five storms that I would bring to your attention this morning, and you might say, oh no, he's got a five-point sermon and it's ten minutes to put. <laughs> but they're not long. But before I give you those five storms, uh, so uh, submit them to you this morning. There are two words that I would use as prerequisite to these five storms. They have to do with how we view these storms, how we deal with these storms. And they are the words react and the word response. You ought to write those two words down. Has everything to do with how victorious we are in the midst of storms. The word react means to receive react on impulse. It's talking about an impulse. Uh, some impulses that are often uh, expressed in the midst of the storm is the impulse of fear. That's a natural, normal human response oftentimes in a storm that we're facing, to be fearful. Uh, we can, that, that, that fearfulness can be followed by frustration. Frustration can be turned into anger. Anger can become exhaustion and bitterness because of what we're dealing with. That's, that's a reaction. The other side of that is a response. A response is different from a reaction in that a response is a thought out reply. A response is a thought through expression of faith, uh, of expectancy in God based on his word. So as believers, God has made us, and I, this is a kind of a play on words, but you hear what I'm saying this morning. God has made it possible for us to be response-able. We're responsible for what we have in the Lord, what God makes available to us. We're responsible to exercise it, are we not? It's called faith. But, but here's what I want you to understand today. God has made us response-able. We don't have to react. We don't have to go down that road of anger and frustration and fear and, 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 and exhaustion. We can respond. We can, re we can th think through this thing and apply the Word of God because God has made it possible for us to be responsible. See, God is a responder. God is not a reactor. If God was a responder, we wouldn't be. If God was a reactor, we wouldn't be here today. Right. Hear what I'm saying? Right. If God, respond, if God reacted out of anger, we would not be here today. The psalmist, Nahum, said he's, he's slow to anger. The psalmist says he's anger but for a moment, but his favor is for life. Amen. So God is not a reactor. He, he, he's a responder. Calvary is a response. Yes. God's grace and mercy and love are responses to us. So God has made it possible for us to be responded. Okay, let's talk about these five storms. Five kinds of storms that we face in life. First of all, there's the normal. If a, if a storm can be normal, the usual storms that come as human beings. It could be a disturbance. It could be an all-out assault on our life. Just because we're part of of the human race. But that storm has a tendency to affect any part of our lives for no reason at all. We we didn't do anything to bring this storm on. We didn't, you know, we didn't chase this storm. We didn't try to find this storm and say, hey, I'd like to be in a storm today. They just happen, don't they? Storms come. I'll say this later. Again, later I'll stress it. Storms go. But we face 
We face storms and they can affect any part of our lives, but we have the promise of God to make a long story short here. God is there with us in the storm. God will have His way in the storm. The message is, don't panic in the storm. Don't lose it in the storm. Don't react to the storm. A few years ago, several years ago now, we were in Nags Head, North Carolina. You, Some of you know where that's at, right along the coast. Dennis and I, I think it was my parents. And uh, I mean, the wind started blowing and you know, we, I've been in snow drifts, but that's the first time I've ever been in sand drifts. <laughs> It was drifting across the roads and people were getting hung up in the sand on the highway. We crossed the bridge at Oregon Inlet there and I thought we was going to get blown off the bridge. I heard him say the other day that when down in Key West that when the, the winds get above 40 miles an hour, they close the bridges. Well, I thought it was blowing 50 or 60. I mean, it was rocking the car and it was all I could do to keep from hitting the side. I was glad to get off. And we, we were getting concerned. Are we about to face an, an, an unpredicted hurricane? So we go to the guy at the desk in the, mot in the motel and I said, should we be concerned? Yeah. <laughs> this happens all the time. Not to me, it don't. <laughs> Unexpected storms come. And sometimes they seem like they're going to Take us out. Hear me what I'm saying. That's the kind of storms that we have to deal with. But God is in the storm. Wait on Him. That's the right response to have. Paul was in the midst of a storm and he said, I believe God. Now let, you can say those words, but that ought to be the cry of faith. I can say those words, but I, I hope they come from my heart. I believe God, no matter what the situation or circumstance is. God is in this storm. God sits enthroned on the flood, the Bible says. And He's with us in the storm. Second storm that we may have to face in our lives, and this, this may be one that some of us may not want to face. That is a correcting storm. The first person that comes to mind this morning that faced a correcting storm in his life is, of course, Jonah. Jonah faced a correcting storm. Now, the thing about correcting storms, sometimes, and I'm talking to believers today, sometimes we react in a correcting storm. Have you ever been angry at God? Have you ever been bitter toward God? Some of us may have at time, times in our lives. We can't figure out why this storm is happening. What's going on? Jonah could have easily had this kind of attitude in this storm. God, God caused the storm to come. Jonah knew it. Especially when he ended up in that belly of that fish and he was still alive. He knew. In fact, he said in so many words, I know God's in this storm. And the Bible tells us that from the belly of the fish, he began to testify, when my soul fainted within me, I, I remembered the Lord. I remembered the God, the covenant God that I serve. I remember the God who, who put this covenant in place with me. And I believe He's going to do His part as I do my part. And Jonah didn't get bitter, did he? He got better. Are you here? Correcting storms may come in our lives. And I'm not in a position to say, that's a correcting storm, brother or sister. Now, now if God reveals that to our lives, we uh, to somebody that to, to, to speak to somebody, do it in love and mercy, not judgment, right. not judgmentally. But correcting storms come. Right. But thank God you don't have to get bitter, you can get better. That's the whole purpose of them. Jonah, the Bible says God used him after the storm, and uh, many people came to the Lord because of his testimony. The third storm that just gets a little worse here you know, before it gets better. The third storm that we may have to deal with in our lives are self-inflicted storms. Some of us have been through self-inflicted storms. It was my fault. Right. I had to go through that storm because of me. You know, whatever we do, that is opposite God's will for our lives. There, we can find forgiveness in Him. Yeah. Yeah. He is a responder. Yeah. 
Yes. He forgives. He's faithful to forgive. When we confess our sins, He's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But oftentimes, we suffer the consequences of those wrong directions in our lives, those choices that we make. God forgives us when we falter and fail because He's a covenant-keeping God. But oftentimes we have to deal with the circumstances. That's what Paul, Paul, when you know, think of this, Paul, Paul is a prisoner to uh, of the Romans. He's on a ship with other prisoners, and he has the gall to tell his captors and the ship people on that boat, I told you not to do this. You should have listened to me. That took a lot of boldness, didn't it? I thank God for people that in our lives that are bold with us. There's times we need people to be bold. Amen? Amen. There's times we need people to say it like it is. In love, I don't, I don't, I don't like to be browbeat, do you? I don't, I don't like somebody putting me down. But there's times I need somebody, there's times we need somebody in our lives to say, I told you so. But there's a way out. You don't have to stay. You don't have to go and stay in this mess. There's a way out. See, see, there's some people that expect God to undo things in a day that took years of rebellion to stir it up. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't like that, but it's true. Let me say it again. Some sometimes we we just think God can just snap His fingers and it's over with. And done, done in a moment when it took us years to get in the mess that we're in. Are you here? But God is a responder. He'll see us through. No matter what it is, no matter what we've done, no matter how bad it's been, just be patient with Him. He'll have His way in our storm. Even a storm that's been self-inflicted, God will have His way. We'll let Him. Amen. The fourth storm that we may have to face in life and may have faced in life are perfecting storm. That's different. That's different than uh, these self-inflicted storms or even a correcting storm. A perfecting storm is to get us further than we are. A correcting storm is to turn us around or turn us, get us back on track. I'm glad God does that. But we could end up, you just think about it. The examples in the scripture of those who if God had not stepped in and corrected them. It wasn't pleasant. It, 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 at times it was very, very physically and emotionally and even spiritually uh, suffering. But God is faithful. A perfecting storm is different. A perfecting storm, God allows a perfecting storm in order that he might take us further than where we are. That's not, it's not an easy storm to go through. It's not an easy storm to deal with, but it, it always has a positive end. It will have. That's the whole purpose of it. good example of, of a perfecting storm is the disciples and the, at least twice that they had to go through storms on the Sea of Galilee. I used to think, why, why in the world did, did the Lord allow them to face so many storms? On that sea, they were seafaring people. But many of them were fishermen. They were used to the sea, but yet they found themselves in dire straits on more than one occasion because of storms that they had to face. They had left everything to follow the Lord. Now think about this: they left everything. They give it all up in order to follow Jesus and and do His will, do His work, to follow Him in the ministry that He had He had called them to. And here they are. Going through storms, it just seems like it's unnecessary, but it was necessary. There's at least two that we draw your attention to this morning. The first one would be in Matthew 14. The Bible says that Jesus sends them on ahead. And He stays on the mountain and pray, prays. And the Bible says they got out into the sea, the Sea of Galilee, and they were tossed by the waves and the wind was contrary. You ever been in one of those storms? might have been at, at just the start of something major. But the Bible says that Jesus saw them as they struggled there in the sea. 
And the Bible says he went to them walking on the water. Walking on the water. In this disturbance, in this, this agitation that they were experiencing, Jesus goes to them walking on the water. Jesus, Peter sees him coming and after Jesus identifies himself, Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come on out here. Step out of the boat. Come on and walk. It, Jesus didn't question whether he could walk on the water. He knew he could. And Peter steps out and he walks on the water until he takes his eyes off of Jesus. You know that story. <coughs> and looks at the storm and he begins to sink. And Jesus asked him, why did you doubt? You had this thing. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been, there's been times in my life that I wanted to say to people that were going through storms, you and, and they, they begin to sink. You, you could have handled it. This was just a, a disturbance in your life. This was just an agitation. It wasn't as big as the devil was trying to make it. It wasn't something out of your league. You're a child of God. You're a responder. You could have handled this storm, Peter. But you chose to look at the wrong thing. You chose to take your eyes off of me and put them on the storm. Well, in Matthew chapter 8, we find another storm that they were going through. This time it was a little, it was worse. In fact, it was an all-out salt on them because the boat was sinking. They were being covered by the waves. And Jesus was sleeping. He was asleep. Now we talk, you know, we could say, well, now he was, he was God. He was God. He never stopped being God. But he was 100% man. He was totally man and totally God. That's a mystery, but that's, that's the truth of the matter. He is asleep in the hinder part of the ship. How could he sleep in the midst of a storm? How could he sleep when the ship was about to go down, when the waves were coming over? How could he sleep? Because he said, we're going to the other side. When they started out, he said, we're going to the other side. Now, don't miss that. He said, we're going to the other side. There was nothing going to stop from, from them going to the other side. But the disciples began to cry out, we're perishing. We're dying. We're about to go down with this stupid boat. But they couldn't. They couldn't perish. Jesus was on board. Jesus was with them in the storm. Jesus had control of things. They couldn't, they couldn't perish. Listen to me. God may allow us to think that we're dying at times. Amen. This is going to kill me. This is going to take me out. This is too much for me. I'm going under. You ever said that? You ever felt that? We may not have said it, but we felt. Yeah. I don't think I can survive this. Yeah, but I want you to remind. But I want you to be reminded. God may allow us to think that we're dying, but we can't die. You can't go out of here until He says so. Right. Think about that. You're in covenant with Him, right. and you ain't going anywhere. You don't have to fear that until He says so. The Bible says that they woke Jesus up. He didn't. Wake up when the ship started rocking and reeling. They went and woke him up and said, we're perishing. And he walks out, and here it is. He walks out and speaks to the storm. Mm -hmm. Peace, be still. And those guys are standing there with their mouths. <laughs> Yapping wide open. You know what they said? You remember what they said? Who is this? That was the whole point of the storm. Because their revelation of Him and who He is took a giant leap in the midst. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? Are you hearing there's a purpose for correcting or for perfecting storm in our lives? Who is this man who controls the winds and the waves? Hallelujah. Amen. He's Jesus. Amen. Who's in the storms with us. Who's, who, who, who stays with us in the storm. Hallelujah. So in perfecting storms, we learn 
to respond versus react. Once we've responded in the right way, once we've thought through and made a reply of faith and confidence in the covenant-keeping God, the next storm may be a powerful storm, but we've been through storms and we're ready for that. Yeah. Because a perfecting storm will always make us respond. Well, the fifth storm that we may have to go through in life, and probably most of us here today have been through this storm. It's a storm that involves us. It's other people's storms that involve us. Being involved in other people's storms. Now, I'm not talking about being a storm chaser. That's kind of dumb to me. I'm talking about in the reality, but I guess we need them sometimes. But a lot of people have been killed chasing storms. I remember when we were kids, every time the fire truck would come down the road with its sirens blasting, we lived a few hundred yards off the main Highway 220, went right through town. And we were a mile from Hot Springs, and I, we were somewhere the other day, and I heard, it was down in North Carolina, I think, and I heard the fire whistle go, and it, it, it did a long, uh, maybe two longs and two shorts. You know what I'm saying? How many know what I'm talking about? They used to do that down in Hot Springs. They, if, if, if it was one long and one short, it was a certain place in the county. My county, where I grew up, is the only county in the state of Virginia without a stoplight. So that tells you something about Bad County. I love it. I love it.